Welcome to Rebecca Sounds Reveille. What a guest I have for you today, because with me is someone who has went to Michigan State University and done very well in theater there. In fact, he's done so well that he um, was nominated for the Pulsar Award in one of the, the, the films there, musical, Dogfight, where he played the lead role of Eddie Birdlace. In fact, um, this was so inspiring for him that he has gone on to do even more than that and landed in his sophomore year there a supporting role of Vince in a feature film called Sorta Late. And this was really kind of interesting because it ended up premiering in the Travis, Traverse City Film Festival in 2016. So what has happened since then has been an ongoing series of things that has caused him to just been drawn further and further into the film industry. And what has happened since then has landed him in some background work and actually got him to lead, have a lead role in a film. And I'm going to let him share that with you and also produce a film. So there's more going on with that. And I'd like him to share, even though as you know, oftentimes I know a whole lot more than what I'm sharing with you because I want the person to share it themselves. So with me today, I have actor producer Patrick Harney with me. With me, welcome to the show, Patrick. Thank you very much for having me, Rebecca. I am really delighted because oftentimes you see people that are interested in going into acting or going into the film industry or going into theater, and that's kind of where they stay. They just they kind of stagnate. They get there, mm -hmm. don't know what to do, or they just don't pursue the passion the way that they should. And you have gone from finding this, this passion with you, especially when you were in college, to where it's at now. But did you have this passion before that? Um, I did. Well, first of all, I just want to say that intro, uh, I mean, if you could just come with me everywhere, that was fantastic. Uh, thank you very much for that. But, um, but, uh, but yeah, so my, my passion started, uh, probably, I think it was about eighth grade. Um, when a friend of mine had told me, you know, I, cause before I was always the sports guy, I was the, I played basketball, football, baseball, ran track, you know, I was, I was always a sports guy. And, um, and then a friend of mine had told me, you know, hey, why don't you go out for the musical? Like, I know you can sing. Why don't you just go out for the musical? And I said, no, I'm not, I'm not really, I don't really want to do that. Um, but she kept, she kept bugging me and kept bugging me and kept bugging me. And uh, thank, thank God she did because um, finally, just to appease, you know, her and then even a couple of my other friends had joined in. <laughs> Um, I was like, all right, fine, I'll go, I'll try out. And, uh, just to give you an idea of how little I cared, really, I auditioned with the song Santa Claus is coming to town. Um, like really just didn't care at all. And, uh, and then the director, um, offered me one of the lead roles in the show. I have chills. And, uh, <laughs> and I was like, well, okay, this isn't exactly what I was hoping for. <clears throat> and. But I thought that my out would be, oh, well, you know, they rehearsed during basketball season, so I can't do it. You know, I just, I got basketball, I can't do it. And then she said that she would work with that. She'd be willing to work with that if, if I'd be willing to work with it. And I was just like, oh, okay. So I tried it and I absolutely loved it. Um, and then from that year on, I did the musical every single year. And I, you know, we did shows like, uh, and, and this was at my high school. So it was, it was, it was Hazel High School. We did shows like The Wizard of Oz. We did Damn Yankees, Kiss Me Kate, Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat. I mean, we did some really, really great shows. And, um, and so then from then on, you know, my freshman year of college, like you had mentioned, I did Dogfight, which was at a, uh, at a local community theater. Um, and that was, that was a lot of fun. But, but at that point, I kind of, I kind of had enough with the stage. And I wanted to more so try film because I knew I always wanted to get into film. And, uh, and so that's when I kind of skated over to doing sort of late. That was my first film experience. And, um, and, I, and I, it was funny because I remember my freshman year of college, I actually 
this was when Batman versus Superman was being filmed at MSU. Um, I wanted to be an extra. I was like, well, I live on campus. This is perfect. Let me, let me be an extra. Right. And then they told, they emailed me back saying, unfortunately, you know, thank you for submitting, but unfortunately we can't have somebody taller than both Batman and Superman in the scene. What? So, uh, yeah. So, cause like, cause I'm six, four. So, um, so yeah, so, so that was kind of a bummer, but, uh, but it was, I mean, it was, it was funny. And, um, and what's funny enough is one of my co-stars in a film that I've done that I know we'll talk about more, uh, scapegoat is actually in Batman versus Superman, uh, Mason Hydra. He, he plays a police officer and he has a pretty good, pretty good role in that. Um, so I, there was still some sort of a connection between, <laughs> between that and Batman versus Superman, but, but yeah, so ever since then I've been, I've been pushing and pushing for film and, uh, television, you know, I'm kind of diving into multiple, um, multiple roles in terms of, you know, producing and I've, I've started to write a little bit as well. And, oh. uh, and, and I'm sure at some point I'll, I'll, I'll direct at some point, but that's yeah. not even, not even close to, you know, right now, but, uh, but yeah. But you've been progressing just the way you, I mean, it's kind of like you're supposed to because, <clears throat> when you go from one part of the industry and you are leading up to things, you get to learn every part of the understanding the film industry in itself. And when you get to uh, the hierarchy, if you will, you can really identify with what needs to be done and how the actor or the extra or every part of it, that person on the other side feels. So you can really be, very good at what you do in those other roles. And I think that this is really ideal for you because you have it. And so what is another aspect of this from the very beginning, and this is what I really want to share with the audience, is listen to the people who support you because people yeah. see things in you sometimes that we don't, we might know that it's there, but we don't really act upon it or we don't want to sort of, ruffle our feathers and make us look a certain way because we don't want people to perceive that we think certain things about ourselves. But those talents and those abilities that people see and support us through, we want to listen to those things because they can take us to heights that we never, ever thought we would pursue and go to. And here you are doing that exact thing. And so I want to talk to you about scapegoat for a minute because here you are you've got something that's getting ready to launch pretty big and this is this is something that you've been working really hard at so can you share I know you there's things that you can't share but can you share with us <laughs> some things about this role that you're in and a little bit about the film that you are allowed to share yeah um so I I can what I can say about the film is um I kind of give you an overview of what it's what it, what the story's about, but it's uh, it's about this group of people that they all wake up in the middle of the woods. Um, they don't know how they got there. Uh, they're all wearing the same clothing. They each have a marking on their arms. Some of them know each other. Some of them don't. Um, and they come to understand that there is some sort of connection between all of them. However, uh, while they're trying to figure that out, they're being hunted at the same time. Um, so yeah, so it's, uh, there's some, there's some great action in it. There's some great fight scenes and, um, there's some, there's some comedy in it and there's, uh, there's a lot of, a lot of aspects that'll make you think and like really think about, you know, kind of make you look inside yourself a little bit. Um, I like that. but, uh, but yeah, we, we started filming it. It's been, it's been a hard, uh, a hard go at it. Um, but in a good way, we, we filmed it, um, and in the post-production process, we've had some bumps along the way, um, which is to be expected for a film. But uh, you know, but we had a private screening for it, um, just as kind of like the first cut of the movie. We had a private screening just to see, you know, get some people's reactions and get some of their thoughts. Um, and so we sold out of the first show in under eighteen hours. No and that was, kidding. And that was one hundred and sixty people but we actually oversold. So we had to add a second show and then we sold out of that show within about five days after that. Um, so we had about 330 people come that night to see the movie. And, uh, 
uh, and we got some, we got some great, great reactions from people. Um, you know, I'm, I'm really, really excited for it, uh, to come out. There are a couple, uh, a couple changes that we've made since then, you know, um, just to make, just to polish things up and, or, uh, or some ideas that we had in terms of the editing that, you know, might fit better. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I'm really excited for it to come out. The, the, the director and the writer is Jeff Cap uh, with, with Vigilant Entertainment. Um, and then Shane Shansky is one of the producers as well. Um, and it was just a, it was just a great cast. I mean, we had Mason Hyder, Heath Satoris, um, Alyssa Caswell. Well now Top Alinsky, she just got married. Um, Katie Dufort, you know, um, yeah, it's, it's just been, it's been a great, uh, great ride for it. And I'm really excited for it to finally get out there for people to, you know, to have access to all the time. So this is exciting. I'm just with what you've shared alone now, because you can read certain things, what you've shared now, I'm like, okay, I want to just stop what I'm doing and go check this out because this is not only going to be entertaining, but there's going to be what you said, things that are going to make me think. And so for me, and I know a lot of people like that, they want to figure things out mm -hmm. and they're looking for, I, I know what's going to happen. And then there's these twists that don't really allow you to figure it out. But if there's other things in it that allow you to think about application within yourself, that's, I mean, this is, this is pretty, pretty well written in that respect, because to be able to condense something into an hour and a half or a two hour mm -hmm. film and convey all of these things and have, held the audience yeah. yeah that is pretty good well and also what's what's cool about it is you know this is this is jeff cap's first feature film and um and so typically with first first films for directors or whatever um or writers they're generally pretty garbage because they're you know just learning and uh, Ouch. it's kind of going, kind of going through the growing pains, but this is, but this movie is like, it's phenomenal. Um, really. I mean, I, I think it's, I think it's, uh, it's really, really well done and it's really well written. Um, you know, because he was, he was very focused on making sure that certain aspects were done right. You know, even if it means it's going to take a little bit longer, but it's gotta be done right. Okay. Um, and uh, and so like that kind of detail is what I really appreciate. And I also really appreciated that he, he was a very collaborative director. Um, you know, he and I kind of hit it off pretty, pretty quickly. And so on set, you know, I'm, I'm a guy that likes to improv. You know, I like to I like to kind of play around with the script and play around with the words. And <clears throat> just because that's that's what my background, you know, that's that's what I grew up doing. And um, and so he. Uh, <laughs> we, we'd be on set and he would be, you know, he'd come over and he'd tell me, all right, so we're going to do six takes. Just make sure you get one that has the words, like the words that are on the page, every other take, just go ahead and try stuff. Just go okay. ahead and try it and we'll see That's what, come, and, and we'll see what we come up with. Um, you know, and that was, that was awesome to me. And, and there'd be times where I'd go up to him and I'd say, Hey, do you mind if I, you know, can I try this in the scene? And sometimes he would say, yeah, that's great. Or he would be like, uh, eh, no, not, not for this one. But, you know, let, let's, let's kind of keep that one out. He'd be like, okay, that's great. Um, cause I've been on sets where it's very much stick to the script and it's a hundred percent, every single word in the order, everything is correct or has to be correct, which is fine. And that's, that's mm -hmm. what some directors and some, some writers prefer. Um, you know, but, but I've found for myself that can kind of constrict me a little bit. Um, yes. but it also helps kind of uh, open up my mind a little bit to figure out, okay, how can I, how can I work within these words? You know? Um, so, so yeah, so with, with this project, especially with it being my first lead in a feature film, um, that was a great, that was a great, great gift to be able to, to have in, in most, a director. Most definitely. I mean, that's really, in essence, a lot of things. I mean, to be first, first and flexible, you, you've got a lot there. And so you've done some other things too. You were in a pilot, um, Syndricus. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah. So, um, so 
Electron Blade. It's a it's a sci-fi project that um, that right now it's it's insane because the ninety eight percent of the world that you see uh, even in the even in the trailer on on YouTube ninety eight percent of what you see um, is all CGI and it's all manufactured by one guy literally okay. one guy one guy is doing it all his name is Tommy Craft um, the dude is a wizard with uh with his skills and um obviously all the people are real but um but yeah so i got to play this character named cinder kiss who you could say he's a philosophical stoner um <laughs> he doesn't he doesn't really uh he doesn't speak much but when he does it's it's uh, he's got something to say you know okay. and um yeah and uh, that was a, that's a very, very fun character to play. So, um, so the pilot is being finished right now, uh, in terms of all the CGI work and everything's filmed, but all the CGI work and everything's being finished. And, um, and then, uh, TK two films. So Cali Bustle and Tommy craft, they're gonna, they're gonna look to, uh, try and get it picked up. And, um, that's always the hardest part. You know, you could put hours and hours and months and months into something and then, trying to get it picked up. That's a whole nother, that's a whole nother beast. So, um, so yeah, so hopefully we can get that, get that going. Cause that's a really fun character to play. And I'd love to get back to, to playing Cinder Kiss. So what, what did you like about that the most? <clears throat> when you say fun, was it because of scripting or because of being how it was on set? Well, I mean, really both of it. I mean, I've, I'd never been a, a part of a, a project where the script was so out there in terms of, um, in terms of like fiction and, and fantasy. Uh, but also the set was a lot of fun. I mean, everybody really becomes kind of a family and um, plus the character, you know, I get to dive into a character that I've never played before. I've never played that sort of character before. Yeah. And so I was kind of channeling my inner McConaughey from dazed and confused type, you know, uh, type persona. And, um, and plus the, the costumes were all crazy costumes and, uh, you know, it, that's what made it, that's what helped you get into the character. Cause for me, I'm always, I'm the kind of guy that I need to, I need to know what the character is going to look like first. That's, that's like okay. one of the first things I do is I need to make sure I know what he looks like. So that way I can, I can choose how he talks, how he walks and um, you know, and then kind of look at the words on the page from there. Um, you know, so that it, it just, it just helps me get into the mindset a little better. And so um, so with that, it was very easy to get into into that kind of mindset because of everything that he was wearing and what he looked like. And, you know, he didn't he was the kind of guy that he doesn't he didn't really care what other people thought. He was very much an individual. And um, yeah, that was very, very fun to play. Do you think that character being individualistic can carry over to us as people in the way that we should feel about ourselves. Yeah, I think so. Um, I've always been, I've always been the kind of guy that uh, always wanted to be a little different, you know? Uh, I mean, that was even from when I was, when I was younger, you know, um, down to whatever people were wearing, you know, I always wore something just a little different or, um, you know, in the style of, basketball that they were playing or whatever I always played just a little bit different and um I always I've always tried to have my own thing you know I, I never want to be a copycat I never want to be a you know a clone or have somebody say oh you remind me of this person uh -huh. no I want to remind you of me you know and so so yeah so I think it is important that people have an individual uh you know, an individual mindset in terms of, you know, we're all unique human beings. So why not, you know, why not thrive in that? Right. Why not, uh, why not find your, your uniqueness and just run with it. So I love it. I absolutely love it. Now you have some other projects that you're working on and one of them you are working on as a producer. Mm -hmm. Um, 
Well, yeah. So there's a, there's a short film that I produced on. It's called Ever After. Um, and very proud of that. Jeff Cap wrote it uh, and directed it. And um, it's a very personal project for him. Um, it's, uh, the story itself is very personal to him. And so I was, uh, I was very honored to be able to work on that project. And it'll actually be at the Royal Star Film Festival on the 14th, as well as the Sioux... Oh, the Sioux something festival, but, but, but it's up in, uh, up in Sault Ste. Marie here in Michigan. Um, and so it's been getting a lot of, a lot of praise at a lot of different festivals. I mean, um, you know, just because it's a very real story, it's a very relatable story. Uh, I'm not going to give too much away cause it is on YouTube. And, um, if I say too much, then it'll, you know, there's no point watching it, but, yes, yes. Uh, but, but it is very, very good. And then I'm also going to be producing and acting on a project. Um, it was written by uh, Nolan Bryant and, um, and Jeff is going to be directing again. And, and like I said, when, when, when we hit it off, I mean, we've been doing a lot of different projects together now because of scapegoat. So, so that's really been really fun. Um, Shane Chance, he's going to produce. And then also uh, a cousin, my cousin, who's an actor, uh, he's going to be also acting in it with me um, and his production company is going to be coming on. So, so Axel Harney, he'll be on it. So it'll be kind of a family affair too, which is cool. Cause like, you know, cause, cause he and I have always wanted to work together. And, and so that one, the working title right now is called storage. Um, we're not sure if we're going to keep it that, but, uh, but we've got the first draft of the script. Uh, we've got a meeting uh, at the, toward the end of the month on the 25th that we're going to go through and, kind of, you know, pitch some ideas of things that we might want to change in the script and um, try to nail down what we want that second draft of the script to look like. And then we hope to have the final draft by the end of September. Um, so we'll take all of our ideas back to Nolan and uh, let him kind of go at it. But because um, Nolan's in Canada, so the the, the writer, so he's, uh, and he, he made a great script. So he took Jeff's idea and just kind of ran with it. So so I'm really excited about that project specifically. Uh, we look to be in pre-production by the end of the year. Um, so we'll start looking at casting and we'll start, um, you know, start looking at finding locations, finding budget, obviously, because that's the biggest part really of pre-production is finding a budget. And that's always the hardest part. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a great story. It's kind of a, it's kind of a cop drama, like a crime drama, um, and it, it flashes back between the 1990s and now. So we're going to have, so everything in the nineties, we're going to have a lot of really cool, uh, a lot of really cool things from the nineties that, you know, that will place in the, in the sets and everything. And um, so, yeah, that, that project I'm really, really stoked for. This is going to be a lot of fun. Let me ask you when it comes to acting and producing, Mm-hmm. How do you feel the difference is for you with how far you've come? I think if you were to ask me to act and produce on this project three years ago, four years ago, um, I would have had no idea what I was doing. Okay. I would have just, I would have just been like, Oh yeah, cool. Sure. And thinking, you know, I guess I, I got to do something, but I don't know what, so I'll just kind of figure it out on the way. Um, but now because I, I'm very much an observer. So anytime I'm on set, I'm always talking and observing to people, you know, whether it's, you know, the key grip, whether it's the, one of the producers, whether it's, you know, the, the lighting technician or who, you know, whoever it may be, I'm always trying to learn, you know, as much as I can on set and trying to learn, um, you know, each person's place on set and what you know why they're doing what why is this light going here why is the camera what's you know what's the angle here for what are you trying to get out of this what's the framing and so I think because of all that and because I've had some experience on set now um, I am able to put on you know two hats and also I'm a very hands-on person anyway and I like to try to do as much as I can for whatever project that I'm working on just because you know that's I mean, this is my life. This is my passion. And so, um, you know, I want to try to help make whatever I'm doing get as big as it can possibly get because I want as many people to be able to see it as possible. And so, um, so with producing, it helps because I can, 
I can have a say in things, but I can be a little bit more, just, I can be more collaborative with, you know, with, with the guys and, um, you know, I'm more so speaking with Shane and Jeff. Um, and then, you know, and also I can speak with like Sarah Bishop, who I, who I believe, uh, is going to be, um, she's going to be the, the wardrobe, uh, and the costume and, 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 and the set designer. So she'll be, you know, I'll be able to speak with her about some things that might be good for the sets, you know, for like the nineties, uh, filming portions and all that stuff. And, um, so yeah, it's just, uh, you know, the, I'm still by far not anywhere near where I want to be in terms of, you know, the knowledge that I have and all that stuff. But, um, but I think that I've definitely learned a lot more just in the last couple of years, uh, just by working. And I mean, you know, you can go to, you can go to acting classes, you can go, and I still think those are great and you can study and study and study and that's great. Um, but I personally think the best tool, the best learning tool, um, is just being on set and learning from learning from people who actually know what they're doing and that, that, uh, that work hard and really just bust their tail to, to get the best product every day. I, I actually agree with you on that. I think education is really important. You can learn a lot, but getting in the hands-on experience and being able to really feel it, see it, hear it, it yeah. really makes a lot of difference. And so, I mean, getting the principles, of course, is important so that you can apply the principles. But uh, again, now let me ask you. So you have the difference between acting and then producing. Taking what you have come from with theater and applying it now is there differences there or is it something that just kind of integrates pretty well um <clears throat> i think they're very different theater and film they're very very different in the sense of theater everything's big every even 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 small um you know very intimate moments on on stage have to be big to be able to, you know, for the audience to be able to receive it and for them to be able to pick up on it. Um, I've always been better at the little, at the little things, the, the subtle things, um, which is why I think I, f I feel more comfortable with film uh, because, you know, that could pick up on that. But in terms of, in terms of it translating, I think the, the prep work that I've learned through theater has helped me with film um, in the sense of going through every word, going through, you know, well, what, what is, what is my character trying to say here? What is, what's he trying to get across? Um, what's the relationship between the other characters for him right now in this moment? And, you know, I think also it's helped with my comfortability because I mean, when it comes to on, you know, to stage stuff, I love it. And I'll probably get back to it at some point, but I would get so nervous before a performance and I would get so like, like I couldn't eat hours before. Um, you know, I, uh, I'd have to like isolate myself for, you know, like, like five minutes before the show time, because I'd have to just like kind of calm myself down and like settle myself in. Um, and, and I always hated that feeling, but, uh, but with film, you get multiple takes, you know, and you get, um, you know, you can, you do have that room to try things. It's not just a one and done, you know, on the day. So, um, so I think it allowed me to really relax. I think with being on doing film or doing theater really helped me to relax more for film. That's a really interesting thing to talk about because we live in a very immediate society and even with podcasting and other things, you have a lot of live stream, even Facebook live stream, YouTube live stream, Twitch, all of these different things. And I know when I was doing live stream, I shouldn't say live stream, but live radio, mm -hmm. there is a different sense because you have in the back of your mind I, there are certain things that I cannot say or certain things that I cannot do because if I make a mistake, there is no room for error. I cannot go back yeah. and change it. And the beauty of film, like you said, is there, 
there is room for error. You can go back, there's editing, you have post-production that they can do things and make it better. And I do think that there is a little bit more confidence in that because you can always say, let's do that again because I think I can do a little bit better with that or I can deliver this in a little mm -hmm. bit better way, you know, with those kinds of things. So I do, I, I have to agree with you in that. And I know a lot of people who love doing that. And the one thing about it is you do it and you get it, you get it done. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like, okay, I got it done. But I really value screen in the fact that it's there. What you do doesn't go away. It's kind of evergreen, if you will, not in the sense that some of the things isn't dated, but it doesn't go away. It's there. Yeah. And um, so I really do love that. Do you have a, do you have an embracement for social media and those who would be following you on social media? Um, are you saying in terms of like, what are my thoughts on social media? Yeah, so in do, the do you, are you encouraging fans to follow you on social media and stay abreast of everything that you've got going? Oh yeah, definitely. I, um, I'm, you know, I'm, I am on social media. I'm on Instagram and Twitter at, at P Harns 194. So it's P H A R N S one nine four. There's no E. Um, and then I'm also on Facebook as well. It's, uh, at official P Harney. Um, I, you know, and then also my, my, my fiance and I also have a YouTube channel. So that's, uh, so that's Sam and Patrick and we talk about a bunch of different things and, you know, and vlog a little bit. It's a very new channel. So, um, you know, so we don't have much content on there yet, but, uh, you know, I, th I think social media is good, but I'm, I'm never one to, and I never will be one to just, you know, put everything on there all the time in terms of just my daily stuff. Um, I think it's important that actors maintain a certain level of mystery um, just to be able to uh, just to be able to maintain, you know, the ability to jump in a character and pe when people watch it, they go, Oh, he's so-and-so not, Oh, that's Patrick Harney in this movie. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Um, I, I think social media is very, very good for marketing and that's typically what I use it for. Um, is, you know, if I've got a project that I'm doing, I promote it on that. Um, or, you know, any shows that I might be on like, like this one, um, then I'll, you know, I'll promote that, but, um, but I don't really dive much into my own personal life, um, on there anymore, just because again, I want, I want to maintain some certain level of, of mystery. And that's not like a, that's not an ego uh, thing or a narcissistic thing that's typically just, or that's honestly just to help my career. Um, you know, because I feel like if you're too accessible on there, um, then you lose some of that, uh, some of that ability to really dive into a character without anybody picking at you being like, wait a minute, you're, you know, though I can, I can tell that's you, yes. you know? Yes. That's a good point. I think we do allow too much to be out there and especially in the sense that you just mentioned because you want to be able to do a number of different things and not give away everything too. So this this is pretty exciting and I like that you are accessible on a, di a lot of different platforms so that you can be able to reach the you know, marketing ability and all of the different venues that are, that people are out there. And I know that there's quite a few of them out there and pretty four big ones and mm -hmm. you're, and you're there. So this is really good because I think with where you're at and your proven track record from uh, just going from, you know, Pulsar Award to mm. going into extra work, even being on a music video to a lead role to directing, producing, and now d dabbling into the writing, which you're going to, I'm sure, end up doing even more than that. Yeah. It's just you're, you are progressing. And I think that as the audience is seeing this and embracing everything that you're doing, they're going to follow you and your career is going to go very, very far. And you're going to just gain a huge 
a huge audience that is going to end up propelling you too, because that support system, like we talked about in the very beginning, is mm -hmm. just going to continue to take you to places that you never thought were possible. And I want to thank you so much for being here today. Well, well, thank you very much for having me. And thank you for the kind words. So that, that was very, very nice of you. So thank you. Yes, and I want to thank all of you for tuning in to another episode of Rebecca Sounds Ravelry. As we talked about today, not only does Patrick have a lot going on for him, he shared some insight with some things that are really important. The support system that we have can really take us places. The dedication, hard work also can take us places. We can never give up on our dreams and really know what, the, what we have, we can really make a difference. So keep pursuing those things. Don't stop. Listen to, the, listen to that internal voice that you have and continue to just develop the things and skills and your own uniqueness. Don't make mm -hmm. yourself a blueprint of everybody else. That same copy, carbon copy, and as he said, what it was ever so true, clone. You don't need to clone yourself. All of these things will take you where you need to go. So make sure you share this episode with everybody that you know, all of the family that you have, friends, colleagues, everybody you know on social media, everybody that you don't, and make sure that you connect with Patrick Harney. Thanks for tuning in. <laughs>